Wednesday night, and you know what that means. What's going on, crackers? After a big monetize this the other night, my wife was determined. The other night on Monetize This, at the very end of the show, Leah showed up hammered, and I was hammered myself, actually. It was kind of crazy. And we had a crazy Monetize This, guys, Saturday night here on the Joe Cronin Show. And I, I, I was hoping it would be a bit of an OG show, and it was. The only disappointing thing is that Monetize This only has 2,600 views which is surprising because I thought it was such a crazy show and people seem to really love it. I thought it might hit the three or 4,000 mark. We've had a couple other monetized this is uh, over the last three months get back to the four and 5,000 mark. I thought that one might, but it did get blocked on a lot of places for copyright stuff, so that, that didn't help at all. But I will say, coming off of that Saturday night, big deal. I put out a couple of videos today. Hopefully you guys saw them. And, of course, because I put out a couple of videos today, there's no alert going out to everybody that I am live right now unless you are a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. So if you are watching this uh, in the replay, thinking to yourself, Joe, I never got the alert. Well, you would have if you were a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And it only costs $1. So for everybody out there who cannot afford cannot afford to become a patron you kind of can because it's only a dollar now obviously there's a lot of you guys out there that are five dollar patrons ten dollar patrons 15 18 25 we have the 25 dollar producers club plus the 50 dollars the 100 dollar spots but i mean the bottom line is obviously look we need the support of the five the tens and the 25s and the hundreds like sith negan ghost from the coast and other people but but, like, if you cannot afford really to do anything, you know what I mean? You really can't afford shit. You know what I mean? You're living paycheck to paycheck, fucked in life, kind of. But you really could make room for $1 a month. If it means that much to you, you don't want to miss these things, um, then, hey, man, it's a dollar a month. And you get the alert that we're live, and you get thousands of bonus episodes. So, I mean, I don't know. Why, why wouldn't you do it? And the only reason why you wouldn't do it is if you were like, I don't really care that much. I miss you. I miss your show, Joe. Whatever. You know, it's not that big a deal. That's understandable. That I get. But if you really get pissed when you miss stuff, why are you not a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show for a dollar? Doesn't make any sense. But if you're if you're really badly strapped, it does make sense. Um uh, the ghost from the coast uh, said to me that I'm gay soon. I don't, I don't know what that means, but I mean, I'm 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 gay now. I don't know what you're like. It says gay soon. I'm gay now. Oh, I see what he's saying now. Now I get it. Because I said I was live now, and he said you're gay soon. Okay, I'm gay now, bro. Trust me. I'm like a a speckle away from taking a dick. You know what I mean? There, there really isn't that much, you know, going on there. You know what I mean? It's crazy. So, I want to welcome all the brand new subscribers we got today. We got quite a handful of new subs today. New um, we got another one right there. That's so weird, dude. I just said this, and then this happens. Uh, Dave uh, Coronado. 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 Uh, welcome to the Stupid Gringo Show. A stupido gringo. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Dave, man, thanks for subbing to the channel. What's up? Good to be here. 70 million views, 70,000 subscribers, 12 years here on YouTube with this channel. Started out as a hobby, turned into a part-time job, turned into a full-time job. Now back to a part-time job. Here we are. Anyway, I've been delaying so we could get the alert out to everybody that we're live. All right, so I watched AEW tonight, but I watched it, and I, I didn't see everything. I got to be honest with you. I didn't see everything. I thought it was a pretty good show it didn't really wow me. I, I I wasn't wowed by a lot of it, but man, that Tony Storm segment, I gotta give you the claps right now. I gotta get the clap and give the clap right now. Tony Storm, damn good segment. She had like a what was that three minute video package? That whole performance of hers is fire, dude. 
everything. I love her. I love what she's doing. It's so ridiculous. It's over the top. I mean, maybe this is just me now. You know, I like scissoring and scissor me daddy and scissor my asshole. I love the broken gimmick in 2016 and 17, you know, and now I like Tony Storm's, you know, tits up, watch out for the shoe. Like, it's so, like, it's right, like when she said and watch for the shoe and then held up the shoe, I thought that was fucking hilarious because she's been throwing the shoe and it, that's funny to me too in some stupid way. My God, bro. It is just the dumbest thing that I find amazing. Like, it, it, that's how bored I think I am in the wrestling world at this point. That, like, this is making me crack up. You know, this 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 is what I need. I need things like this that are ridiculous to keep me entertained, to keep me going because... I'm just, and we're going to talk about AEW Dynamite. We're going to talk about MJF. What is going on with him? Just kind of like in limbo right now, I feel like. I feel like MJF is just, you know, he, he really could take over. He's a guy that can take over a show. Like, he's a guy that can be the whole friggin' show. The whole entire show can be MJF. And, yes, he is still the guy that you, like, look to as, like, this is the main guy. What's he going to do? This is huge. It's MJF. It's a big deal. But, like, dude, it just feels like he's sort of, which is fine because every character, every wrestler once in a while and everybody, you know, at some point takes a step to the side a little bit or takes a step back so that when they can come back with a, with a big pop or they can, you know, do something big when they come back or they, we don't get sick of it or whatever, you, you turn the volume down a little bit, you turn it back up again, you turn it back down a little bit, you raise it up a little bit, and you turn it way up, you do all that stuff. you know. It, but it's just, I feel like MJF a lot of times, the guy can always run on a 10 almost all the time, it feels like. And it really does feel like he's being sort of held back a little bit, whether whether it's on purpose or by them or by him or whatever. It's just, I, I get it, right? Um, They got to move some people around, move some things around, spread the love around, all that sort of stuff. I went from being somebody who kind of liked Tony Storm, you know, I kind of liked her, to being somebody who really didn't really like Tony Storm. And I was like, I don't really... And I think to, the thing about Tony Storm is just, I got sick of the, like, um, the praise for her all, from all these, you know, neckbeard people. Like, oh my God, Tony Storm, what's so great about her? Do you guys remember this? I had this argument with Jake DeMarco and Rustafa and everybody. I've been ranting about this for a long time. If you're a long-time listener, you know what I'm talking about. The, I said, tell me the matches that she's had that's, oh, it's so amazing. Tony Storm, wow. Show me the matches. Find the matches. There's barely any, right? Who cares? What? I feel like Tony Storm, and, and, but this isn't right now, but I'm saying that a year ago and before, I felt like Tony Storm's character was, I'm a fat neck beard and I'm horny and she looks good. And guess what? Then she opened her OnlyFans and started making like fifty, eighty thousand dollars a month on OnlyFans and proved that whole goddamn thing right in the first place. So there it was. Right? But now, I mean, did she watch my rant on her? Tony Storm, I would love to know if she'd watch the rant. Maybe she didn't, but like, dude, what happened? Years and years of just her wrestling as Tony Storm. Pretty good wrestler, looks really hot. It's pretty good. Seven out of ten. She can go anywhere and do things. I don't know what she's done though. She just does she's pretty good. Solid. But like nothing that blows my mind, but all these people have their minds blown by her. I, I don't get it. And it's their horny neck beards, and that's about it. But now it's almost like Tony Storm heard that rant and was like, Well, I'm gonna do something. And boy. Did she do something, bro? She put she's putting on a character right now that's making me laugh. It's so ridiculous, it's stupid, and I think it's funny and it's entertaining to me. I don't know if it's gonna get annoying or it's gonna go nowhere at some point. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, I don't know. But right now, bro, I'm feeling it. I love it. I love that Tony Storm segment. It's my favorite thing that I saw tonight. And um I, you know, I didn't see everything tonight, but so that could be why. New subscribe. I didn't really understand 100% the main event. Yo, random man. Random man. Thanks for subbing to the channel, man. We're also going to be talking about Ghostbusters uh, 
in just a few minutes because uh, trailer's out. Also going to be talking about GTA. I'm going to put out a poll really quickly. Um, what are you most interested in? Um, is it Ghostbusters uh, trailer? Is it GTA 6? Is it AW Dynamite? Or is it the debate tonight? The GOP debate. What do you what are you most looking forward to me talking about tonight? Leave it in the poll or uh feel you know, feel free to let me know what you think. Uh, we also got, like I said, GTA um announcement coming. Uh we're gonna get the trailer potentially here. GTA six has been announced. It's uh the trailer is arriving in December, so we're gonna have the actual trailer. It could be a, I don't know if it's a teaser or the full thing. I'm gonna read the full story. We're gonna talk about the things you might want to see in uh, GTA a little bit later, and we're gonna talk about the Ghostbusters trailer, which I've seen and probably you have seen it by now. If not, check it out real quick. Um, and I will. I'm very interested to talk about the the uh, Ghostbusters trailer in just a few minutes. I'm gonna record it. And I'm gonna isolate it and re-upload it later, but. Uh, we'll talk about it here. I'll get your opinions on that. But real quickly, let's get AEW out of the way because, you know, I um, I just uh, you know, I I watched it off and on, and I and I saw most of it. But I just, you know, like I said, I wasn't like blown away by it. I I thought it was a pretty good show, but I'm curious what you guys think. So in the chat, if you watched AEW tonight, uh, give me your rating out of ten. What did you think of AEW tonight? Out of ten. And I know that there's been a lot of people talking about it, but um, you know, we'll talk. And I, and I will talk about WWE. I will go back into WWE. I, I made two videos today. Two videos. Hopefully, you guys watch them. If you did not watch them, go back and watch them later, or go give them a click somewhere now on your other device or something. I don't know. Give them some love. Give them some likes. And um, before I move on here and get into a little more AEW. I do want to say thank you to um, 64 Smith, which um, I think is Colonel Stutters, but um, he dropped a $5 uh, super chat or super thanks on my CM Punk video earlier. And since the ad revenue is probably going to equal about three, four, five dollars $5, uh, that $5 was uh, very nice of you, sir, to make that video into a $10 video. So... Uh, thank you, uh, 64 Smith, 64K Smith. And he also said Dingleberries, which means he watched the whole video. So appreciate it, bro. Uh, thank you for uh, watching the whole video, and thank you for dropping the super thanks. And uh, thank you to everybody else who watched it, too. And, of course, the video on LA Night. So we'll follow up on that. CM Punk added back to the alumni section on WWE.com. And, you know, Booker T saying that, L.A. Knight's a backstage nightmare, asshole, bad attitude backstage, whatever he said. So ridiculous to me. And we'll revisit some of Monetize This, episode 432 from four days ago. If you guys missed Monetize This from four days ago, there's so much to clip, man. There's a bunch of stuff my wife said that we have to clip. She said some ridiculous shit that could be taken out of context for sure. And there's some funny fucking stuff. He slipped up and said hey, the Booker, N-word. what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. There, right? yeah. 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 Go ahead, call oh, me. Yeah. We coming for you, Nick. Oh, oh, no, oh, 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 he better be coming for me. I want to get froggy, oh. Book. Oh, Jesus Christ. Leah, Leah, what do you rate Bullfrog? Like, you would just, <clears throat> just die. Yeah, to you want to get froggy with me, Leah? <laughs> oh, I fucked with him one night. What? Yeah, did. Oh, oh yeah. you did get froggy with me then. I was fucking around with him, whatever. I was trying to get him to say whatever, whatever. But, uh. What do you want me to say? Whatever, whatever. I don't think he was fine. He was actually, like, too smart that time, and he, like, caught on to it. Hey, Joe. I am pretty smart. Hey, Joe, there are three of us, Joe. There's three of us, Joe. No, no. Me and my two brothers. I don't. Somebody has to find the episode where he said there's three of us because. Holy shit, it was funny, man. I'm sorry I wasn't on the other night, everybody. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, I'm going to look at the poll in a minute. There is an unbelievable amount of people that want to talk about GTA. 
We that the poll is blown. I mean, Jesus, I would have thought AEW because it's an AEW night. I would have thought maybe Ghostbusters because a big movie, but I knew the GTA might win the poll. And my God, bro, GTA, GTA Six trailer is just that's crazy, bro. It's that big for people. It really is going to be crazy when it comes up. Um, and we're going to get the trailer in December, so we're going to talk about what what do you want to see in uh, Grand Theft Auto? I mean, I want to see. Uh, I'd like to see rape, you know. I know a lot of people are, you know, going to be put off by that. But, you know, I want to see... I want to see everything in real... I want to see the real world, all the terrible things that can happen in the real world, happen in um, GTA. The actor strike ended, William. Wow, okay. Fi- today, it finally ended because they, they ran into some hiccups. Uh, but, yeah, I'd like to see some gape. And, you know, I'm just going to say gape so we don't get demonetized. But uh, gape in Grand Theft Auto 6, you know, go in the corner, hold somebody down. And, what you know, what are they going to say? Oh, that's not appropriate or that's too far with this murder in the game. How is that too far? You can beat someone, torture, essentially torture somebody, beat somebody, murder somebody. Why is there no rape? Gape. Oh, shit. Gape. Gape. Why is there no gape? You know what I mean? You know a game is big when there's an announcement for a trailer. Yeah, right? Or when the game is at 57% and everything else is, like, not beating that. I can't believe... I mean, GOP is almost beating Ghostbusters. I'm here... Like, that. Ghostbusters was going to be my number two subject tonight. I had uh, AEW Dynamite, Ghostbusters trailer, and GTA number three. And then maybe, at some point later, we maybe I'd mention the GOP thing. But, like, I don't want to really do politics because I don't want people to be upset on both sides of things and every side. So don't really want to go there, but, I mean, maybe I'll mention it. But it's really just the same people saying the same thing in the third debate. It's like I don't need to see any more debates. I know who everybody is. At this point, there's nothing you're going to do to convince me of anybody right now of what they're going to do. So, yeah, I mean, GTA 6, what do we know? I'm going to read what we know. I'm going to read what's coming. Um. People have been, you know, concerned that it's going to be like woke and goofy now and censored. Meanwhile, I'm calling for Gape to be in it. You know what I mean? I, I People are like, oh, it's going to be woke now or it's going to be like censored. It's not going to be as good. I want Gape. I'm going, I'm going the other way. Fuck going backwards. I want to go forwards. You know what I mean? First, we had beating down of hookers and killing people and stealing cop cars and loot, whatever. You know, gangsters and mobs and hits and runs and drunk drinking and whatever. Like, dude, where you got to go up. You can't go down. If you go down, you're giving in to entropy, right? You're giving in to all systems or breaking down. You don't want to give in to all systems breaking down GTA 6, okay? You don't want to do that. You want to add to it, okay? We need to add to it. By the way, the donations are on now. The link is pinned to the top of the chat. Streamlabs, it's up there. If you need Stream Elements, that's down below. It's easier for credit card people. Stream Elements down below if you need credit card. Stream uh, Labs up top. Use that link if you want to donate. And, of course, you can Super Chat with the Super Chat button if you want to do that or become a member. And welcome to the brand new subs. Appreciate you guys being here. Dave and Rando Man. Um and like I said, we had a fun time on Monetize this Saturday night. Go back and watch it if you missed it. Um, I think it's probably one of the best shows of the year. Maybe top top five of my better. I just think it was probably top five. Maybe top ten. I don't know. I was loaded. That could be part of it. I wasn't that loaded. I mean, I didn't get as crazy. It like just hit me all of a sudden. I was like tired. But like I almost flipped out a couple of times. But uh, I uh, I was pretty juiced up. I wouldn't say I went full old school at all, but I, I was pretty lit. And then Leo was lit too. I was hold I was I actually think I was holding my alcohol pretty good. Like for the amount of drink I think I had ten shots after not really drinking in like eight months. I barely I even drank really. That was the most shots I've had in like two years. Three years maybe. I, I don't even know. So I thought but I, so for that. I thought I held my own pretty good there. I could have really gone off the rails. 
but I, I didn't. So, um, I like Darby Allen and Sting, man. I really like Darby Allen. I really do. It's he's still just got that presence. He's one of the best characters in the company. Um, you know, I think they did what they had to do here in the main event to put over, try to put Jay White in the right place. But you know, I don't know. I don't know. I need to get drunk right now. I got work tomorrow. Maybe like five thousand. Like, um, I don't know. You got a thousand bucks. The in order to in order to in order to not be able to go to work and be loaded, it would it would be a, I would take a, it'd take a thousand bucks because I could literally not go in and then I miss uh, and I, like I have to drive to New Hampshire. And then I have to drive into Boston tomorrow, two, two appointments, right? But let's say I sell one of those appointments, right? That could mean that I hit my bonus this month, right? And the bonus could be 1500 or it could be 300 Depends on what my levels are. But let's say I hit the bonus of 1500 But what if I don't go to work tomorrow, if I don't go to work? And I so I skipped those two. And one of those was the one that would have put me over for the bonus, and I really need to hit the bonus because it's Christmas time and I got three kids. So in order to miss a sales opportunity tomorrow, it'd be a thousand bucks. Sorry, bro. So I don't think so. Um, but uh, it was fun the other night. We were getting loaded. You know, they turned. So I couldn't do the show the uh, yesterday um, because they do you know that they turned my electrical off and my gas off? Like in the same day, or they were th they were here to do it. They didn't end up doing it, but they were here to do it. Well, they did do it, but they didn't. You know what I mean? Like I got it back on, but it was like the guy the guy from the company was like, "I've been working here for like fifteen years. We rarely do this." And he goes, "What I don't understand is you don't owe that much. I usually I'm shutting off people that owe thousands of dollars." You know what I mean? I don't know why we're shutting you off. It doesn't make sense to me, but I'm like, he probably says that to everybody. I mean, that's like, you know, that's what I would do. If you were shutting people off and they were home or they were outside or something and you have to like face them, I would be like, I don't know. I, you know, I have to do it, but I don't, I'm not like, we, we don't usually do this unless you owe like $10,000. <laughs> like, I don't like, they probably just say that to everybody because that's what I would do to defuse the situation, you know? Like to be passive about it, like oh yeah, I'm surprised. I don't know, you know, call him. But um, yeah, so I couldn't do the show the other night because uh, without electricity, you can't do a show. I'm just kidding. Um, no, but it was it was just a rough a uh, rough day of craziness. We had electricity. I got it back on real quick. Um, but it was just a lot of. It took up all my time. I was trying to do other things. It took like forever to fix that and figure everything out. But anyway, the bottom line is it was so stupid. It was only one pay it was like one payment. It didn't make any sense. It was like one payment and like the pay one of my payments didn't go through that I made like 5 days ago or something. And so it was just like dumb. It's not like I it's it's like it was just fucking goofy. It didn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Like I like I I think I owed like 400 bucks. It was like you're really doing this for 400 bucks. I'm going to pay you on Friday. I just paid you 300 bucks the other day. Now I'm paying you on Friday. And you like in between that, you see the payment coming to you on Friday. You see the payment I made five days ago. Like, I don't have the money right now, but I'm going to have it Friday. And I paid you the other day. Like, do you not like, why would you do this? I don't fucking get it. I called them and was like, yo, what the fuck? Made no goddamn sense. So anyway, that was the other day and it was fucking, I was having a horrible day. Um, and then um, just a lot of crazy shit happened. I won't I won't even get into all the shit because I'm not, I'm not even going to tell you. I'm not even going to tell you, but it was weird. It was just a weird fucking day. Weird week. Weird week. Um, The best thing tonight, uh, I don't know, man. Is it Tony Storm? I love the Tony Storm stuff. I really did. I lo By the way, she looks, she actually looks hot here. I, I've been somebody that doesn't go, go like, what do you, go, 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 Go goggle, I almost said Google. Goggle, gog, go googers. <laughs> I'm gonna say a swear. Um, like got got. I don't know. I'm not somebody who like fucking. 
like passes out over Tony Storm. Like, oh my God, oh my God, Tony Storm, I'm a neckbeard. Listen, I've been married to my wife 17 years. I love her. I don't care. Like, it's not even one of those things. I'm not like a religious, like, like putts. Like, there are some women I drool over on this show. I'll be like, oh my God, Jade, sit on my face. Like, there are some women, but like, I just, Tony Storm, I never think, like, oh wow, like, yeah, so I don't understand what everybody sees. But in, I don't know what it is, but this outfit she was wearing here in this black and white thing, that little sort of, that skimpy thing with the bra and whatever else, I don't know why, but it, man, she looked really good in it. Ogle, oogle, I don't know. Gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. Uh, but she looked really good, bro. She looks really hot, like, in that. I, I never, I've never caught myself looking at Tony Storm like, wow. I usually just look at her and go, yeah, she looks pretty hot and stuff. Cool. I don't know. Whatever. But tonight, in that black and white thing with that outfit on, I went, wow. That looks pretty goddamn good. Look at this. Look at her. Look at her. Look how she looks. Man. Oh, that looked great tonight on her. She is looking fire on that tonight. Hmm. God damn. Travis Keen's at the show. He just tweeted me. He's still there. So they're, you know, recording uh, Collision and all that other bullshit. Shut up and bend over. That's right, Stone Rosses. The Tony Storm contract signing was different. It was fun. James Shrimp, Fajitas. I agree, dude. That's the thing, man. That was different. It was shot. It was like a pre-video thing. I really appreciate they did that instead of in the ring and the signing and then they get in a fight. Oh, my God. Enough of that. They have every company has really overdone that to the point of like it's like nauseating. So man, uh, I I agree with you hundred percent. I really appreciated that they did this signing kind of in a different way tonight, you know, in this backstage segment. Oh, it was it was refreshing, you know, to see something you know different compared to that for a change. Because they've been doing it everywhere so much that's been driving me nuts. Great to see Briscoe back, the big injury. You know, um, I don't know if anybody else has anything else we want to talk about with uh, AEW. I mean, be happy to do it, but she is on Patreon making like $50,000 a month. It's kind of crazy. God, please, PS5 exclusively next gen only. What? What ghost? Pico, the show where you say something funny. I don't know what that means. Uh, those PS4s will melt if they try to play the new GTA. <laughs> Wait, are they now are they saying you're going to be able to play the new GTA on a PlayStation 4? I mean, that just sounds crazy to me. Let's listen to it. Hi, sense upgrade. Oh my god, fuck. Fuck you IGN in your commercials, you cocksuckers. Some guy named Doug. Which means we are that much closer to Modern Warfare 3's launch. I'm super excited. I'm, I'm really afraid to watch IGN because of how woke and stupid they are, but let's see. I don't know about y'all. Anyways, in today's fix, we have GTA 6's trailer dropping in December. Super Mario Wonder is already breaking sales records, and Chucky is joining Dead by Daylight. <laughs> Wow, this is so unnecessary. In a post on the Rockstar Newswire, the developer shared that they are very excited to finally debut GTA 6. The exact wording that avoids the title GTA 6 said, We are very excited to let you know that in early December, we will release the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto. We look forward to many more years of sharing these experiences with all of you. The 25th anniversary of Rockstar is sometime next month in December as well, so it's entirely possible the trailer could be released then. The foundation date for Rockstar only states December 1998, however. Another speculation from fans is that the trailer could drop during the Game Awards on December 7th. Rockstar has not confirmed it'll be at the event, but it wouldn't be the most absurd thing to witness at the Game Awards. Unfortunately, we don't have any other details on the next GTA, but a release window between April 2024 and March 2025 was speculated based on publisher Take-Two Interactive. I just don't believe this game would come out the GTA would come out in 2024. And if it does, it would be, I would feel like it would be late December. I just, can you see, I just can't see GTA. We haven't heard anything about it 
suddenly GTA 6 is going to release in, you know, spring of 2024, I just don't see that. That would be, to me, would be a massive shock and like a surprise. You know what I mean? Like, I would be blown away if that were the case. I would be thinking GTA would be coming out, honestly, in 2025. But I would give, I would say, if it came out sometime around like winter of 2024, I could see that as well. Now, it would be nice if it came out in spring because that sets you up for the summertime. I think that's a pretty good time to come out. But, you know, spring, like right towards the end of the school year, leading into summer, keep everybody hooked. All the kids, at least. Certainly the adults will be playing. We've all grown up with GTA, if you're, uh, you know, of my age. Um, so obviously we're all into it. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, I just, wow, I, I did not see it. I thought, you know, an announcement about GTA 6 would mean that we're about a year or two away from the game. And I mean a year or two away from the game. So I would be, if, if the game were to come out in the next six months, wow. That would be, like, to me, bombshell stuff. So, and we'll take, by the way, we'll take, uh, yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't put the game out during the video game awards. It doesn't make sense to me that, that this wouldn't be coming out uh, during the video game awards. I don't get that. I mean, that's everything. Because you can release it during the... And, and at least put a, tr a teaser out, right? Wouldn't you at least put a teaser trailer out to say GTA 6, boom, like full trailer on Rockstar's anniversary? Or if it, or if you didn't want to do that, you could, you could just do it at the Game Awards. Why wouldn't you? just doesn't make sense that you wouldn't do it. 339-226-6610 is the number to call if you want to bring up something about AEW and call me uh, about AEW. You want to talk about AEW? That's on the table. You want to talk about Ghostbusters? That's on the table. You want to talk about AEW, WWE, CM Punk, whatever? That's all on the table. Everything's on the table. It's an open Wednesday night. We'll talk about it all. We'll talk, and we're about to get into the Ghostbusters trailer in a minute, and we'll continue to bounce around on all these topics of everything going on tonight. Um, it's up to you. You know, we'll go everywhere. Um, also, if you want to donate to the show, the Streamlabs link is pinned to the top of the stream. We are looking for the donations because God knows I got to make up for that four hundred dollar electric and gas bill. So drop that dono, and we will uh, we'll get it uh, going. Shit, Magpul Mike, he's an OG. What's up, dude? Pretty good, Joe. How you doing? Um, I'm doing okay. I've had three, like, teenies, so I'm loaded. Or maybe, the, what do they call them? I don't even know. Do you know what a teeny is? Martinis. No, no, not a martini. Uh, They're like the little barrel huggies. They're called hugs now, or that's what most people know yeah. them as? Yeah, when I was a kid, we called them teenies. They were a different company, but... Um, yeah, they're hugs or whatever. The little barrel sugar drinks. They're terrible, yeah. terrible for you. Yeah, I've had about three of them, so I'm probably got diabetes and going to kill myself. But no, what's up, dude? What are you thinking about? I uh, just want to talk about AEW. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious who the mask people are and who the double character is that's uh, pretending to be MJF. Yeah, it's really weird, man. It's like it could, people are like, it could, some people said it could be MJF. Some people say it could be Adam Cole. Some people think it's CM Punk. I'm going to go with the, I, I really. Think it's, uh, I think it's AEW trying to copy the Nexus. Oh, really? You think that this is like a group of people that it'll be like outsiders that aren't even really to do with WW, with AEW? Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and they all like make, make like their debut. Yeah. Like Will Ospreay is the leader, or some you know something like that, an outside compet like New Japan. Yeah, guys. possibly other other uh, wrestlers from New Japan or or somewhere else. Yeah, I, you know, I was thinking the other day, I was like, would would I, would it be cool if it wasn't Adam Cole? Because I feel like he's obviously the number one suspect, like that he's the guy under the mask, or 
or that it's what's his face strong Roderick Strong. Yeah, Roderick Strong. I, I I do like this whole gimmick of him in the wheelchair yelling at him. It's pretty funny. It's getting better, and here's the thing about that. Yeah. We've never seen Roderick Strong, at least I've never seen him, be able to act like this. This is something yeah, like, agree. you know, Lan- he reminds me a lot of Lance Storm, and Lance Storm was never really able to break out of that stone-faced, exactly. boring, yeah. whatever. So, yeah, so I'm actually impressed by Roderick Strong. He's... I don't even know if he knew he could act like this, but it's working. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, credit to him because it's it's funny. It's I, at first I thought it was kind of stupid, but you know what? You know what I've figured out? Any of the any of these gimmicks, right? Going back to Broken Matt Hardy and several other people, like it always starts out with a first week or two where I'm like, this is stupid. And then, it, but, yeah. but by the third, fourth week, I I'm I'm laughing at it, and I'm like, this is hilarious. All right, that's what I thought about the whole Tony Storm thing. Exactly, Tony Storm's another one. You're like, what is she doing? What the fuck is this? And then you find yourself thinking, like, this is brilliant. So, so that's a good measuring stick, man. When something's weird as fuck and it throws you off, and you think it's stupid or it's a pathetic or gonna ruin their career. Just wait two weeks, and it ends up usually turning into something gold. Yeah, I thought about that for Chris Statlander, but she's gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, she's all right. I like, I still like her. She's just been poor. Things been injured too much. Yeah, she's broken both her ACLs. So that's crazy. Anything else you want to say, Magpul? Uh, you fucking crazy to hear from you, man. You've been here like what seven years, eight years. Yeah, pretty close. Uh, I watched the Ghostbusters trailer. It didn't really impress me. It looked kind of cheesy. It it doesn't. Um, okay, so real quick, I'll go through this very quickly, sort of. Um, yeah. So obviously, here's the thing. I've accepted that this is like, it's almost like it's a spinoff. Like, you know, exactly. when yeah. some spinoffs happen and they don't really feel the same vibe as the original, but they're still, like, pretty good, you know, that's how I feel about this. What I appreciated about the last one is the respect they gave to the Ghostbusters and the whole Egon thing at the end, and it was very touching. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Like, yeah. I really like it. It's not really, it's not the old Ghostbusters vibe. It doesn't have the dar- the clever, dark comedy it's a diff- exactly yeah right so it's a different vibe it's not the same vibe but i'll take it in a way because it's like it's existing in the ghostbusters universe <laughs> in a different tone uh yeah. and i don't know like i would say that i thought afterlife was like a solid 7 out of 10 for me i think some people yeah, thought I agree. you know 6 so yeah I-, I don't know about the kids with the packs i don't really they should not really be able to shoot the proton packs, you know. Yeah, the, I agree. That's a problem. Like, I would have preferred if they were going to be, become Ghostbusters that they would have made special packs for them. But I have a problem with that. Why are why is everybody? It just I'm worried that in this movie, like everyone can just be a Ghostbuster. Like everyone's going to put the suit on. Like it doesn't. Yeah, I, I agree. So the the negatives to me are Pat, Pat Oswald. He's a scumbag. Uh, he's in the movie, yeah. so he's a scumbag. Don't like him. Throws his friends under the bus. Forget his po- politics, right? Some people may like his politics, but my point is that I don't like him as a person. Throws his friends under the bus, and he's wasn't he accused of something terrible too? Do you know? I don't know. Honestly, I don't remember. But he's actually a local from where I where I live. He went to the high school down the street from where I live. Wow, go get him. Yeah. No, he. I I used to like him. I thought he was like a sweet guy, seemingly, and he was kind of funny. Not a huge fan, but I thought he was all right. But after the stuff he's done and said, and he hates us. He hates fans. Like, and he. I forget the person. Yeah, he's he, pretty squirrely. He's weird, dude. Like he will. He would kill his mother to get out of being harassed. Like I feel like. So yeah, that type of guy, dude. I just don't like him. I know too much about him. So I hope he's not in the movie a lot. I hope he just plays like a key figure at a point to give information or something and then you, we never see him again I just hope he's not reoccurring um, exactly I like the theme of the fro- frozen stuff and there's something I'm worried that it's going to yeah, be it's different it's different I like it I'm worried that it's going to be like a monster of the week sort of thing where it's like generic yeah so I, I, I wanted it to I wanted them th- okay let me 
I'm all over the place, bro. I'm hyped up now. You got me talking about Ghostbusters. But um, this Afterlife, the last one, and even some of this reminds me a little bit of the cartoon a little bit more than like, yeah. the movies, like if that makes any sense. So I was hoping that they would do the Sam Hain character, the pumpkin guy from the uh, Halloween episodes of the cartoon. Um, I thought he was scary. It's very spooky that the king of Halloween or whatever, and maybe they could have explained that in a better way or something. And um, that would have been cool. I think at some point interdimensional ghosts would be cool. And they've, I mean, that's essentially what many ghosts are, but getting into that would be cool. This also reminds me of the go- the Ghostbusters go to hell uh, story that they were going to tell at one point where like all of New York is engulfed and they're all in hell and they've got to whatever. And they kind of did some of that in the video game instead. But this kind of reminds me of that in a way too, so that they could take some ideas from that and use it in this. Uh, but instead it's everyone's stuck in frozen you know, like it's exactly. So I get that vibe, and then um, don't so don't like the kids with the proton packs. Don't like that everybody can be a Ghostbuster. Uh, maybe that'll be explained. Yeah. Don't like Pat Oswald. Uh, this is definitely like Stranger Things meets Ghostbusters. Like I exactly that. That's exactly what I thought of it. Yeah. Clearly, somebody sat down in a meeting and was like, "What if we did Stranger Things meets Ghostbusters?" And yeah, they have that one kid from the from Stranger Things in there too. So. Right, right, right. Like, absolutely, like it's told. But you know what? It, but here's a, another positive. I'm gonna give you another positive. Another positive is, although the characters don't have really great depth, they didn't give them really good depth in the first movie. The, I feel like the yeah. characters all have pretty good chemistry together. It's like they don't, they don't really have exactly. Good, we didn't get to like learn like watch them bond a little more and and grow and have this depth so that sucks but that's not good but they just instant have chemistry everyone from the the girl I forget her name that plays the basically the main character Egon's daughter um to Finn Wolfhart to uh everybody else like they just sort of have chemistry like they don't they don't have a great backstory they should have a better backstory that connects them better but the yeah. the chemistry's there. It's just again, it's it's never it's not going to be the original Ghostbusters movies. We're watching a different take in the realm of it, and it's not. But they've also respected it. So anyway, I don't know what else there is to say other than it looks like it's going to be sort of another, um, maybe seven out of ten if we're lucky. Six, five, seven out of ten, you know, version of a Ghostbusters. Um, what do you call it? Not movie but like uh been off yeah atmosphere ghostbusters world mm-hmm. i don't know uh and, and you know it's the one thing you can say about the all female one which was terrible is at least it was like it knew it had to be a comedy so it was trying to be a comedy but it was like retard comedy so it didn't work exactly uh, this the this version of it is more like we said stranger things it's a little bit more serious and sort of toned mm-hmm. down and it's made I mean Ivan Reitman's son who makes this I guess you know he's used to doing things that are more like this so but I think it just works better like that but it's also made for like kids it's made for the exactly like what what would you say like 25 year olds and under like it's made for those people that never really saw the original Ghostbusters in the theater but they've always known about Ghostbusters and now they get to see this but also there's you know, there's a, there's enough nostalgia stuff in there for all of us who have nostalgia for the franchise that it really is. <laughs> they've done a friggin' masterful job of making everyone somewhat happy enough to want to see it. Like, pretty good. Exactly. So hire these people for Star Wars or something. I don't know. Or hire Ivan Reitman. I don't know. Like, they've got something going on. Uh, so yeah, that's my impression. I'll see it, and uh, maybe it will surprise us. You know, but it's going to be hard to really get to that emotional um, moment of the end of the first one. But the first movie was exactly. such, the first movie was such a retread of stuff we know about that. Mm-hmm. So maybe this one will have a lot of stuff that isn't a retread. So it'll be more interesting in some ways. But I don't think obviously it will have the emotion that the ending of the first one had. So I don't know. Um, look at that fucking head, dude. That ice monster. It's got like horns. 
huge horns and, and glowing eyes. Like, it looks freaky. But it reminds me of the cartoon more. I don't know why. Anyway, that's my opinion. Magpul Mike, anything else, man? Um, GTA 6, I'm pretty excited for that as well. I'm hoping they kind of incorporate some of the older games in it, like Vice City or Liberty City. That would be cool. Well, you know, what I was thinking, and so are you thinking what I'm thinking, which is like where you can actually, where you'll actually be able, this is my idea. I don't know if anybody else has had this idea or I'm ripping this off or something, but like I had this idea where in GTA 6, you can fly in planes finally, and that means you can go mm -hmm. to every GTA location that the, you know what I mean? Like the, like six of them or That'd whatever. That'd be cool. Imagine yeah. that, dude. You can fly from Liberty City to, you know what I mean? And you can just go to all the different locations and you unlock the maps as you go through the game. Um, yeah. I don't know, dude. Like something like that. This open world multi-map uh, game. But I don't know. Would that, that might be too big for, or too ambitious. I don't, like, am I, I don't that's, know. That's a pretty cool idea. I think that would be wicked cool because all these other games have these like, oh, I'm in Arendon. Now I'm in Scarsdale. Now I'm in like whatever. And it's like, why can't GTA say for the first time, like everything, like whatever you call it, it's going to open up. But but do we know the title yet? We don't know the title yet of the game, right? No, there's no title yet. No, they, they just announced that they're going to do a trailer next month. That's right. So, like, there's nothing really I can build on as far as that goes, but it would just be really cool if, um, you know, we could... What's the name of... Uh, if, like, yeah, so if like, you had San Andreas and Liberty City, and, like, yep. you could just go to all of them, and there there was nostalgia, right? Like, there was characters that are still there or something, or you can become those characters. It would just be neat. But then I just... And then there's obviously the new zone, right? Like, so you're not... You're getting a new zone... But then you're getting all these like throwbacks in the game. If it makes sense, do it. If they couldn't and it doesn't make sense, and it would just be for nostalgia, probably don't do it. But it, you know, it just I don't know. I have that's my vision. If I could of GTA, poor Keith Lee. Keith Lee is terrible. Says GSTS. Damn, dude. Afterlife was so damn mid. Brah. Says Luke Rojas. I thought again. I thought Afterlife was was nice i thought it was nice if that makes any sense like I, again like and here's the thing luke i'm I, i'm kind of happy dude i'm kind of happy because i liked ghostbusters afterlife i thought it was finally like something nice for ghostbusters it wasn't amazing or the same as the original ghostbusters it was just nice like it was nice different tone and nice but dude we also got picard season three in star trek and it's like dude that was a send off for the TNG crew and finally good Star Trek. And it's like, I feel like there is some hope out there with Star Trek Picard season three being so good and Ghostbusters afterlife being okay. And you know, some other things that are going on out there, you know what I mean? I feel like there's fucking hope for stuff. And like, I feel like there's, I, I never thought I would say this because I, I've, I've been saying for the last 15 years, absolutely no don't you dare do a goddamn thing with back to the future but i feel like for the first time in my brain i could see a back to the future movie happening because it wouldn't be a reboot and it wouldn't be the same tone necessarily potentially but dude there's so much possibility to make a Back to the Future movie in which it exists in the Back to the Future universe, but it isn't a redo, a recasting. It isn't, like, sacrilegious. It isn't bullshit. It's legit going and getting the guys from Back to the Future and then saying, we're going to do something with it. We've got an idea. And honestly, dude, you have Christopher Lloyd alive. You have Michael J. Fox alive. Granted, he's got the Parkinson's. Why not, you know, do some sort of, like, situation where, like, in a, 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 a different universe crossed over and, like, the DeLorean, someone's doing something that's fucking up the universe and they got there in the DeLorean or something like that 
and they've got to do something to put the universe back together or whatever. There's no reason why, and it sort of that allows it to stay very separate from the other Back to the Futures, and it allows you know maybe somebody different to be involved, but it allows Marty and Doc to either be there at the beginning or show up at the end to save the day, right? Like are somebody's are the hero, the new person, whatever they are. They figured this out, and the whole movie revolves around them, but they don't really understand what's going on. Um, and it isn't until the end, you know, that Marty and Doc show up, similar to Ghostbusters Afterlife, where at the end what happens happens. So, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of things you can do where, like, okay, if that sucks, it's not really a big deal because Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3 still exist, and it's awesome. But if you try to retell the story of, like, kid goes back in time and his parents got to get back together, it's like that's already been told and told perfectly. Don't do that. Don't do the retelling of that that's going to be horrible or not as good. Instead, do something completely different that sort of is in the same universe that will be, you know, a 7 out of 10. That's all. That's all I'd like. Give me some nostalgia and some fun and another story to add that probably won't be as good as the first three but won't shit on it either. I'll take that. Anyway, sorry, went off on a rant there. Um, uh, Magpul, that's uh, about it, man. I guess I'll let you go, dude. Uh, I'm thanks for calling. You got you look at how much shit you drew out of my brain. Yeah, no problem, Joe. Have a great night. Take care. All right, you too, man. <laughs> I love that Magpul Mike is like so dry. He's like, yeah, okay, Joe, you take care. You take care. See, I'm such an animated psycho asshole that, like, when I'm around people that are so calm, it, like, makes me nervous. Like, I'm like, he's so calm and cool. Magpul Mike. That, it, like, makes me nervous. <laughs> like, it's so bizarre. Um, but Magpul, what... Uh, and you can see in a guy like Magpul Mike why I have, I've always enjoyed, you know, taking calls on this show since day one and why I, I did so well with Jake and why I... um you know, always enjoy talking to someone eventually because my brain gets fired and going when people start rattling things off to me or bringing up things and it just gets me going. So great call, Magpul Mike. You pulled about 25 minutes out of me there. So wonderful job. Great job. Great job. Wonderful job. Let me go to the donations. If there are any donations, I don't know. But if you want to support the show and you guys, I could really use the support. If you want to support the channel, you want to support this show and want up everything here, Bring it on, bro. Um, the Streamlabs link is pinned to the top. And the donation amounts are listed all down below. And uh, Super Chats are on as well. And so far, let's go over. We haven't had a donation yet, but we have had... Well, yeah, we have. We just haven't had a Streamlabs one. We've had a Super Chats. Let's, uh, let's get them. It's my birthday. <laughs> So you became a sorry a member. All right, the villain. Yo, the villain uh, has been a member for forty-seven months. Congratulations and thank you, thank you, uh, villain. Forty-seven months. Holy shit! Bro, that's crazy. Super chat party. No. What's your opinion on Pepsi Phil returning to WWE? Well, I kind of gave it. Did I give it in my video from yesterday? Jay and Joe's World, thank you for the four ninety nine. No, I guess I didn't give it. I didn't really give it. But one thing you can say is it looks like CM Punk is coming back to WWE and they are really stringing it along with hints left and right uh, for the last month and a half for last month to now and it's gonna go going forward uh, Jay and Joe's world thank you for the 499 I think that um I mean it's it's kind of amazing that we're sitting here on the verge of thinking that about three years ago we were uh, we were blown away and amazed two years ago, uh, we were blown away and amazed that CM Punk was joining AEW and coming back to wrestling, coming out of retirement or whatever you want to call it, the hiatus. And my God, CM Punk is in AEW. Cody Rhodes is in AEW. AEW is AEW. But dude, we're on the verge 
of Cody Rhodes and CM Punk two years later being in WWE, both. And we're on the verge of having multiple big talent in WWE. Two or three years ago, WWE was damn near dead. They had Roman Reigns, and that was about it. And then at some point, like, Sami Zayn kicked in, and it was like Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn was doing something. And what else did they have? Nothing really, right? Not really anything. Maybe The Fiend and some... There really wasn't much there. Randy Orton was there, I guess, but they did not have a lot going on, guys. We were talking about it. We were talking about the lack of big stars or even like mid card stars. Like it just, they didn't have much of anything. It was really bad. And then all of a sudden, now, shit, bro, look at what they got now. You have, you have like top mid tier guys who are ready to burst through into the main event level, right? You got guys like Sami Zayn who are pretty up there still. You know, you got Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn as top mid-card, you know, mid-mid-card talent, top mid-card talent. Then you got LA Knight making a run now for, like, maybe top-level talent in some point. You got Roman Reigns. We've always had him at this point. And uh, you got John Cena making returns. You got Cody Rhodes. Um... You know, you got, and and if you get CM Punk back, I mean, bro, you got Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, LA Knight. I mean, then you got the Usos, the situation with them. I mean, you have so, you have multiple names that are popping crowds and interesting enough to people. And I'm leaving out a name or two. But, bro. Like there is, there are a lot of names and um, a lot more talent and sort of main eventer people, uh, top mid card talent and main event talent than you had. And and Rhea Ripley, I, I I'm leaving out the women. I'm sorry, I'm leaving out the women. You got Dom as well. You got Dom Dom getting over as a heel. A great heel getting great crowd reaction. So you got that. I'd put him on that list somewhere. Top, you know, you if you were to be like, who's somebody that gets a big reaction from the crowd, like whether it's face or heel, who can, you know, draw some money or like draw some interest or whatever. You know, that list would have been about three people three year, two or three years ago. It would have been about three people, I think. And it would have been like what I don't even know Roman Seth and Sami Zayn a couple of years ago, who who else was there? Nobody. Now it's like Roman gets that reaction, Cody Rhodes gets that reaction, La Knight can get that reaction, Uso can get that reaction, Sami Zayn can get that reaction. Um, and if CM Punk came back, he would get that reaction, for sure. Seth Rollins kind of gets that reaction. Um, you know, there's just, there's somebody, and then Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley has been doing great. So Rhea Ripley is, uh, I put her on that list at this point. Yeah, Gunther. Oh, yeah, thank you, Man Moore. Man Moore, great points, man. Logan Paul is, is getting reaction now. He's becoming a featured guy. Uh, Gunther is getting over. Uh, I mean, he's over. He's just the guy right now. He's very responsive people. I mean, dude, there, there, there is a litany of guys now. There is a legitimate, you know, roster. You have a video game roster now, you know what I mean? From the 90s, you have the 12, 12 men in a video game roster, you know? Um, but, yeah. Bored of Punk? Well, I mean, I don't know. We'll see when he comes to WWE if you're still bored of him, right? Who knows what he'll do in WWE. But um, let's take a little flashback to monetize this, and I uh, will play the donations in a few minutes. Jay and Joe's World, thank you for the four ninety nine. If you guys have anything to say, the donation link is pinned to the top of the chat. It is Streamlabs. You can use that link. Or Super Chat if you'd like to. Let's uh, take a little flashback here. I mean, my wife showed her... My wife was showing her nipples the other night almost to try to, like, win or really to try to piss off 
uh, Luke Rojas. I mean, they were in quite the battle on Monetize This. If you missed Monetize This the other night, guys, uh, I can't wait till this Saturday on Monetize This after what happened last week. I don't know if we're going to be able to get my wife drunk and me to take shots again, but Jesus Christ, bro. The show was fucking crazy. It was a little too, it was a little too crazy. Cuz I was uh, you know, I had some drinks. I mean, we got Leah Leah trying to send pics. Le- Leah trying to tease Rojas about how she can do anything she wants to the title at any time and she's sending him fucking belt tit pics. Like the belt. I can't even see this cuz I'm not I can't see screens on she, Discord. So she Not said, unfortunate for me because I have class. Unlike the, even though I was talking about chest, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's all right. Leah, Leah took a bunch of. <laughs> looks, honestly, it looks like this was filmed in a fucking torture chamber. Like I feel, I think that you were like kidnapped or something, or you're like uh, like sickly or something. It's very strange. This I'm picture. Sickly? No, this yeah, it's just like- the way. That- it's just Austin the way the photo is framed. It's not meant as an insult. It's, it's not meant as a backhanded insult that I can't get in trouble for because I didn't oh, he say it. put another either. one up. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'll keep my mouth shut. What do you? All right. Thanks, what do you want to say, Jay Menace? What do you want to say, Jay Menace? The reason that I asked is because I want to make sure that you get off what you're trying to say. So if you're trying to say something and finish that first, I will go after. Jesus. Well, let me tell you something. Luke and Leah went at each other, bro. They were destroying each other. Um, They were in a fight, like, I don't know, bro. I mean, it was a little too crazy. It just went on and on at one point. But they were, man, they were fucking bludgeoning each other. It was crazy. You make it seem, you make it seem like you're the smartest person. You fucking did! You literally (laughs) He count as a JCS host anymore. And listen, Leah, you can pretend all you want that you don't, and they can give you all the fed answers that you want. But literally, uh-huh. literally, you did. You literally told me, "Oh, if I did, I would tell him right now to mute you." To me, that just proves to me that you kind of do did do I stuff like that? that behind. You did it. You fucking did. You <laughs> literally did, bro. You literally just fucking did earlier. Are you muted, Stop, dude? No, listen. Are you muted? Can no, everybody Leah. hear him right now? Leah. Leah, right? Leah, this is right. what this is no, what I'm talking about. Was, this is what I'm talking about. Though. This right. is what I'm talking right. about, though, Leah. Exactly. This is what You're I'm talking about. Point. This is You're what I'm talking point, about. You idiot. This is You're what I'm talking about. No, but this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking okay. about. Go ahead. What I'm Go talking ahead, about baby. is that Go you ahead, pretend pie, things. My no, 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 but you literally, but you literally, what the fuck? But you literally pretend that you didn't say things earlier when everybody can listen back. Now, now Jesse's doing the Nazi salute. Great. Hear you say them. You can pretend you didn't say these things all you want. I'm honest about myself. Yeah. I admit when I say things, and I laugh off when I say, you know what, I was wrong about that, or I say, hey, you know yeah. what, maybe mm-hmm. I just took it the wrong way. Yeah. You, <laughs> you make it seem. Hey. There's another donation. Say to Leah is that I did try to make that I did try to kind of like you know stop whatever we were doing, but you can listen back and Leah was kind of being nasty to me, or le- at least that's how I feel, just how she feels that I cry say something it. to her. So <laughs> cry okay, about see, it. Literally, literally, she's just going after me. That's fine. She's <laughs> going after me. Honestly, that is, is fine. Okay, that is now, fine. Joe, but what it doesn't change, what it doesn't change, is that I'm the monetize this champion. Joe, but- can I say something? I have two questions to ask. Um, Shit, bomb. Let me play this donation real quick. I have two I'm questions sorry. to ask. Points to Leah. Points to Leah from oh, Matt. No. Matt Cologne gave points to Leah. Can I ask my two questions? Do you want to say thanks no. to Matt Cologne for the points, Leah? I do. Thank you, because he's actually helping me here. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead. First question is the first question <laughs> is to Jesse. Yeah. Jesse, have I ever pulled my weight and asked Joe to silence anybody ever on the show? Oh. I was making fun over there because she was like, Jesse, have I ever da da da? And she was like being so innocent, like innocent voice, like, Jesse, have I ever? And so you hear me in the background. I went, oh, <laughs> bro. <laughs> so, yeah, if you did not see monetize this or you for some reason fell asleep uh, before that point, you need to go back and watch the six or seven hour show monetize this 432 from Saturday four days ago. Eddie Gomes in the chat says, um, uh, your opinion on WWE gets Osprey. Um, I don't know about Julia or whatever. I don't, I don't care, but Osprey, I mean, 
Yeah, if WWE got Osprey, I mean, I think he would be a pretty good asset for them because, you know, they don't have. I don't know though. Would they be if they? Hopefully, they could utilize him and they could turn him into somebody who's pretty big or whatever. You know, I just, I think he's got more. He's got better. Um, I feel like the closest thing that WWE has to Osprey is Ricochet. But Ricochet's not really that good on the mic. He's like pretty, he's just okay. He's like, he talks and you believe him enough. But, you know, Ricochet is who he is. You know, he comes out and basically talks like Ricochet, and that's not very entertaining. But he's like, all right, you, you like him. It's like you like Ricochet and you believe him. He sounds very like, I'm Ricochet and this is what I mean and I'm going to do and I'm going to go out and wrestle. It's like kind of boring, but like, you know, you believe his words for the most part, although he's a bit cheesy, maybe-ish. So it's like Ricochet, 8 out of 10 in the ring. He, he doesn't have the, you know, he can't really do the punches and the clotheslines and the stuff really well that makes me like the old school stuff that's really good. He just does a lot of gliding and flips and crazy shit. So, like, there's something to that. He doesn't deliver punches and kicks like Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Stone Cold, Steve Austin. So for that, I find him weak a bit, but he does do a lot of that paper flying around, but I like it. So, you know, Ricochet in the ring, I always think he's an 8 out of 10 in the ring. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you know, I got to give him an 8 just for his high-flying crazy shit. He's so interesting and wild that it's fun, but it's a, it's a niche to me. Like, doing the flip-floppy stuff all over the place is a bit of a niche to me. Um, I think Kenny Omega and uh, Will Ospreay actually look like they have more of a, a little more rough stuff behind some of their kicks and punches, although I don't love theirs either. Um, but ricochets are really soft, and that irritates me. Like, But if Ricochet punched and kicked... And, you know, sort of did some movements that were more like Shawn Michaels and, you know, Bret Hart or, or people like that with a, like a better looking, you know, um, you know, I don't know that it, it just he it doesn't I don't like the elbow st strikes that looks terrible. I don't like that. I, I deduct points for that. Okay, you know, like I and I think Shawn Michaels is better than Ricochet. So, if I'm giving Ricochet an eight in the ring, I'm gonna give Shawn and you know a ten or a nine, you know. Um, but I think Ricochet is really close to being damn damn near to that, but he's not for me because he doesn't have that extra charisma in the ring that I'm looking for. Has a lot of charisma, but in the ring, but doesn't have that extra charisma I'm looking for. But he does have a great. But as far as a high flyer, if you were to pigeonhole him or put Ricochet in like the high flyer niche or whatever, the guy's a 10 out of 10 high flyer. Like, you know what I mean? If you were to pull up anybody else like Takamichinoku, people like that, you know, other guys, who, name them, you know, Grand Metalik and people like that, I would take Ricochet over everybody. I think he's the best. Ricochet is the best high flyer acrobatic wrestler in the WWE for me. But, like, as an overall wrestler, uh, he loses points because of those elements that I think are missing. And, of course, he has no pro really not a really doesn't have a promo either. So, Ricochet is a 5 out of 10 promo, um, which, you know, 6, 5 out of 10, which is you can put them on TV and they can handle some words and say some things pretty good. But uh, they're never going to blow you away with too much. Uh, but, but they have good conviction. So, that's he's got conviction. So, that's good. But, yeah, so, you know, 5, 6 out of 10 promo, 8 out of 10 in the ring. So Ricochet falls into a 7 out of 10 total package category. Will Ospreay, though, really fun stuff in the ring. I don't think he quite can do some of the acrobatic stuff that, that, that and um, charismatic acrobatic stuff that Ricochet can do, but I think he can do a lot more crazy shit. Um and, and he's more believable with some of his punches and kicks and things like that, although he's still not on the level I'd like him to be on either, but he's got more of a brutalness to him, a, a brute version of himself. And with his promo skills being probably, I, I don't know, I, 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 I can't say fairly for Will Ospreay because I haven't seen all his promos and all the things he's done, but from what I can tell in seeing him in AEW, he, he has the potential for a 7 or 8 out of 10 promo. 
And so for me, if he's got at least a 7 out of 10 promo and he's got an 8 out of 10 in the ring, looking at a pretty solid guy. So, hey, whoever whoever can grab the full-time um, Will Ospreay is going to be far better for it. And on top of that, um, what else is there to say? Um, I, what else, what was I going to say? Um, I think he would fit AEW better for them, but honestly, the, the bottom line for Will Ospreay is what I want for Will Ospreay at this point is I want him to get the most money. I really do. It's, I don't even, I'm not even being selfish as a wrestling fan. Sometimes I like to say where I want to see somebody go. Um, I want to see him get paid the most money. Because he puts the way he puts his body on the line, and the way that you know he's been paid, you know over the last few years, but not extravagantly, you know. He, I mean, let's think about it. In the last three, in the last three years or four years, you know, Will Osprey has made about a hundred something thousand dollars a year, right? And the previous years, he made about you know fifty, sixty, seventy thousand maybe, right? So you're talking about a guy that for about two or three years maybe made fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Then for about three years now or four years now, he might be coming close to one hundred thousand or around that area. And then you take away taxes. You know, you're talking about a guy who for the last eight years has made about sixty five thousand dollars and is working on an independent contract. And he's putting his body seriously on the line, and he's got kids to take care of. So, as far as I'm, you know, if wrestling ended for Will Ospreay tomorrow, he would be looking for a job. For what are his skills? I don't know. So he'd be looking for a job from fifty to a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. What would happen? You know what I mean? So they'd be really grinding it almost paycheck to paycheck and maybe he could make some extra cash signing and with his wrestling clout on the side. But you know what I mean? So like for me, Will Will Ospreay and, and hey, Will Ospreay may have a lot more money than I realize. Maybe he's got more money in the bank, I understand. Um maybe maybe Will Ospreay has like fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm assuming he's got I'm assuming Will Ospreay has like fifteen thousand dollars in the bank, twenty thousand dollars in the bank. And he's maybe, maybe he's got a little more, but you know, if tomorrow wrestling ended, he would, you know, you'd have to be taken seriously about getting a job and getting things together pretty quickly. Um, because it could fall apart pretty quickly if you not start making income and making money. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe he's got more money than I understand though. You know, I just looked, I just looked up his net worth. And it says Will Ospreay's net worth is $5 million. So is he getting paid money in New Japan? I, I don't know. About, I don't know. Maybe I'm retarded. I didn't know he's made that much money. I'm just guessing. But damn, it says it says he's worth $5 million, but that could just be what he's made over the years. Do you know what I mean? Like, it says his net worth is $5 million. It always overestimates net worth. It always does. Hell, for years it said my net worth was a hundred thousand dollars. Well, I think it still says that, but well, actually, and I guess if I sold everything, I, I could I could make that right. If I sold my house, I sold everything I have, I paid off all my debts, right? I'm 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 like eighty thousand dollars in debt, right? I owe, I have like twenty five thousand dollars in car in car credit card debt, loan debt, sixty thousand to the IRS, you know. 15,000 of the state IRS or state taxes. So if you add up all my debt, my debt is damn near $80,000. But if I sold my house today, I would get like $220,000. And um, if I paid off all my debt, that would leave me with about 100000 left over. So is that what they're factoring in? I don't know. I, I live paycheck to paycheck now. I don't know. And I and I have debt. So I'm, I don't know. So how are they coming up with five million dollars for Will Osprey? To me, that sounds like what he might have made over the last eight years. You know what I mean? Right? Like let's pretend that he made more than I said he did, or more than I thought he made. Let's say let's say he made about one hundred sixty-five thousand for six years. Well, that's a, that's a million. 
but I, I don't know. I, I have no fucking idea. But what I do know is that he's, I don't think he's that, he's got that much money. I mean, if, if he was, okay, if Will Ospreay has five to $10 million right now, then, then I would say, fuck, I would just go to AEW. I would just be go to AEW and I think it's a good fit for AEW. And as an AEW fan, I'd rather watch him there. I think, unless he's got some character in him that I don't know about, maybe he does. But if he could get, but if WWE was going to offer him like millions of dollars and, you know, he needed the money, I would say definitely go to WWE. I don't believe he's got five million bucks yet. It just doesn't seem right to me. But I don't know, bro. We talked about Ghostbusters. We talked a little bit about GTA. We talked about AEW earlier and quite. And, yeah, it's 11.22 at night now. And uh, speaking of money, well, we actually did not do well on this show tonight. <laughs> speaking of money, Dave Coronado, thanks for subbing. Rando Man, thank you for subscribing. The Villain, thank you for 47 months. Jay and Joe's World, thank you for four ninety nine. And since the donations were really quiet tonight, I want to thank Magpul Mike for coming on the show. And calling the show. He was the only person that called the show. And, um, you know, without donations coming in to trigger me into some topics, um, Magpul Mike was great on the call. He had some, you know, some nice takes, spurred my brain a bit about things that are coming out and going on. And I really, really appreciate the call, man. I think that was a great call that helped me uh, sputter along. And I guess I will not see you guys again because Friday nights are worthless to go live now, it seems like. And um, obviously Wednesday nights, I haven't... Re I, I, I might be back Tuesday, next Tuesday. And Saturday night, of course, this Saturday I'll be live. So this Saturday night, monetize this. Join us for that. Uh, we had a great one last Saturday. And then potentially Tuesday I will be live for Tuesday Night Rage. Again, I'll be back hopefully with Rage Tuesday night. So look for that. So Saturday night, monetize this. And then Tuesday night, Tuesday night rage. Uh, Friday night, I probably won't see you because Friday nights have been worthless. And uh, Thursday night, obviously, I'm really busy and have to work. So I will probably catch you guys Saturday. Now, I may put out a video, though, and during the day tomorrow or Friday. So there will be a couple of videos going out, you know, whether it's on wrestling news, other topics, things like that. You know, so I'll I'll bring those and we'll have those out for you. Like like today, I had two videos, you know, that came out. So that was pretty good. I thought I thought they did all right. They didn't do great the videos, but you know, I haven't really been making a lot of videos recently, so it's good. I'm gonna get try to get back to making daily videos, so that people have something to watch, react to, and and get going on. Cause you know, it's, people seem to like the videos today. I think so. Um, they did pretty well. You know, the CM Punk one, over 2,000 views, that's pretty good for, you know, pretty good for nowadays on my channel. So we'd like to get back to the five, ten thousand 10,000 views a video and then go from there. Um, I'll take 3,000 to 4,000 views a video again, though. That'd be great. So LA Knight video did over 1,200. CM Punk did over 2,000. You know, under 1,000 is always, like, depressing at this point. Very depressing. So we'd like to see the one, two, three, four thousands. That at least makes me feel like, all right, cool. You know, this video got out to some people. You know? Um, and that's about it. That's about it. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. There's a super chat. Shit bomb! Gape, 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 gape. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Mr. Pico Boulevard. Yes, in the new Grand Theft Auto 6, I am looking for Gape. Okay, I am looking for Gape, and we're not going to say the R version of that because, you know, you can't do that now. That's naughty. But I'm saying, man, they got to bring... I want, in Grand Theft Auto 6, I want airplanes where we can fly to Vice City, fly to San Andreas, fly everywhere. That would be fucking awesome if there were flights in GTA 6 where we could go around the universe. That would be sick. And then, as I said, on top of that, you got to make Shit bomb. it more realistic with Gabe. I will gate Pico in Q minutes. Oh, my God. Now Arushin Chu is going to gape Pico. What the fuck is going on here? 
Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Arushin Chu. Do we know? I can't believe it. Is like Streamlabs broken? What the fuck? Everyone's super chatting. Streamlabs is like neglected tonight. Tony Storm was the standout tonight as far as that goes. I'm going to get out of here, guys. I hope you hit the like button. I really appreciate it. I know um, it wasn't a really good show tonight, but, or, you know, tonight's show was whatever, but I don't know if I'll do a Wednesday show next week, but I'll definitely do, I'll try a Tuesday night again. So Saturday night, monetize this. Tuesday night next week, go back and watch this show if you missed any of it. We talked about Ghostbusters. We talked about GTA. Talked a little bit about AEW at the beginning. And uh, we talked about some random bullshit. I appreciate you guys being here. Hit the like button. Share it out to everybody. Let everybody know about this show. And um, Tony Storm put a nut on her. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys for supporting me, though. And thanks for everybody who became a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And uh, we need you on Patreon. And we need the uh, we need the cock, I guess. I don't know. See you tomorrow. Oh, no. I'll see you Saturday night. See you Saturday night. For monetize this. I got some shit to say Saturday night. Again, go watch monetize this 432 if you missed it. If you missed monetize this 432, here it is in the chat. There it is. Check it out. Also, go back and watch my CM Punk video from earlier today. It's on the channel. And, of course, the L.A. Knight video about L.A. Knight being called a bad attitude guy backstage. Fuck you, Booker T. Yeah, Booker. King Booker. I want to suck Booker's dick. What? I am afraid of no cops. Dick suckers. And you fucking by the phone. Shit bomb. CM Punk Survivor Series on Rumble. Oh, I'm going CM Punk at the Royal Rumble all day. I went into depth about that in my other video, Louis Erdinetta. In my CM Punk video earlier today, go watch it. I went into depth a little bit about that. But yeah, I'm going Punk at the Rumble or something else, maybe even on a Raw. But I just don't think he's going to show up. I don't think it's a Survivor Series thing with Punk. Just don't believe it. See you guys. Uh, see you guys, man. Thank you very much. You want to support the channel? PayPal.me slash Joe Cronin Show. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And um, we'll do... We're out of here. See you later.